Thank you for joining us for this WTVA 9 News Coronavirus Town Hall. I'm Craig Ford. And for the next 30 minutes, we're going to answer some of your questions, just basically answer some basic questions that you and others may have concerning the coronavirus. Obviously, the world has changed dramatically in the past few weeks. And some folks, now that we've had some of the recent developments with public areas being restricted, schools being closed, a lot of folks may be paying more attention to the coronavirus than when this first may have come on. So we want to introduce Dr. H.F. Mason, who is the Chief Medical Officer for Baptist Memorial Hospital Union County. He's also the hospital's Chief of Surgery. Dr. Mason attended medical school at the University of Mississippi. He completed his residency at Vanderbilt University. Dr. Mason, thank you so much. Thank you, Craig. So I guess we'll start really basic here. Sure. What is coronavirus? And why can it be so lethal? Coronavirus is, well, actually, there's a family of human coronaviruses that uh, affect humans, obviously. There are four that basically cause the common cold. Mm -hmm. well, most of the time when you get a common cold, it will be uh, one of those four types of coronaviruses. Over the past few years, there has been the development of some more serious coronaviruses. When, when the SARS outbreak, happened a few years ago when we had the uh, Middle Eastern uh, Respiratory Syndrome coronaviruses, uh, coronavirus uh, causing the, the, those problems in the Middle East. This coronavirus that we're seeing is called a novel coronavirus. Novel means new. It's a coronavirus that we haven't seen before and most of the time how that happens, it usually is with a coronavirus that has um, normally infects animals and it, it uh, mutates so that it can jump and transfer and infect uh, humans. And that's what's, what's happened with uh, coronavirus, the novel coronavirus. The, the sickness that it's called is called uh, COVID-19, coronavirus disease 19 for 2019, because that's when we first uh, picked it, when, we, when it was first picked up over in China. Fortunately, the good thing is that the vast majority of people 80% who, who get infected with the coronavirus, they're going to have mild symptoms, maybe like a cold, maybe like a bad cold, uh, flu-like symptoms, fever, body aches. For 15% of the people, it's going to be uh, more serious, uh, people who are at higher risk, older people, people who have chronic medical conditions, uh, chronic heart disease, chronic lung disease. It can be a lot more problematic for them. For about 5% it can be very, very serious and it can, it, it can even be lethal. The, the most dangerous thing about this virus is, is that just currently we don't know a whole lot about it. Fortunately, we're learning a lot more about it every day, which, which is good, but uh, until, until we know more, it, it is dangerous. So, again, we're starting basic here. Sure. Let's start with the symptoms. Sure. What are they? The symptoms, the symptoms can range from very, very mild to severe. They can be just like symptoms with the flu or a cold, fever, body aches. It can progress to difficulty breathing and shortness of breath. And, and, and the spectrum is very wide. Um, children and adolescents, they may have minimal, if any, symptoms. And um, older people can have severe life-threatening where they can't breathe at all and they need to, to go to the emergency department. Gotcha. Um, if you think you have it, these symptoms show up, what should you do? Well, first of all, if you think you have it, don't panic. Stay calm. That, that's, that's the first message that we like to tell everybody. The first thing you should do if you think you have it is call your doctor and tell them, hey, I'm concerned that I might have the coronavirus. They're going to ask you some questions, and, and, and based on the CDC guidelines, some of the questions they're going to ask, okay, um, are you having flu-like symptoms, fever, body aches, cough, and I forgot to mention cough with, with the other symptoms, uh, and it's really not a productive cough, it's more a dry, hacking cough. Are you experiencing any of these symptoms? Have you traveled to any of the uh, Category 3 countries listed on the CDC's website, and, and I highly recommend that, that people look at the CDC's website because there's a wealth of information there. Uh, th th those current countries right now are listed as China, Korea, Iran, 
and uh, mostly all of, all of Europe and the UK. Have you traveled to those countries? Have you been around anybody who has had the coronavirus? If you answer no to any of those questions, they may just tell you to stay home, monitor your symptoms, and, and, and let us know if you get worse. If you answer yes to those questions, they may ask you to come in and, and, and get screened. Okay. All right. We will get more questions for you momentarily, but right now we're going to take a break at our WTVA 9 News Coronavirus Town Hall. We welcome you back to our WTVA 9 News Coronavirus Town Hall. I'm Craig Ford, joined by Dr. Mason with Baptist Union County. Let's get to one of our first, uh, one of our viewer questions. The sure. first one we've got for you, what is the process once someone has been diagnosed with a virus? Most of the time, it, it depends on your symptoms. As I, as I said earlier, for the vast majority of, of people, the symptoms are going to be mild. So is what we recommend that you do is that you stay home and you, you self-isolate. There's a difference between quarantine and isolate. Isolation is when somebody is sick, removing them from other people. Quarantine is when you stay away to see if you develop. I think it's important for the people to know that. So the first thing that you do is you isolate yourself and you give yourself supportive care. Drink plenty of fluids. Uh, take Tylenol or Ibuprofen for the fever. Monitor your symptoms. Should you get worse, should you develop shortness of breath, call your physician. They may want you to come in and be seen or they may recommend that you go to the emergency room. And, and that leads me to our next question, which is who decides who goes home to be in self-isolation or to quarantine and who goes to the hospital? Sure, sure, that, that's, a, that's a great question. As I said, if you, if you think you have the coronavirus, I would recommend that you call your physician or once you're diagnosed with the coronavirus, your physician or if you happen to have gone to the ER, they will make that judgment, that clinical judgment and say that you might be able to go home, which you should. Most people will be able to go home and, and remain at home. Should you have serious symptoms of shortness of breath, should they measure your oxygen saturation and it be low, they may recommend that you be admitted to the hospital for closer observation. Briefly, let's talk about testing. Sure. Um, we've heard a lot of discussion about that as of late. Can you go to the hospital? Can anybody go to the hospital and get tested? Are there limitations? What? I, I think there are limitations. At, at, at our hospital at Baptist, we recommend that if you think you might have coronavirus, call your physician. If you don't have a physician, you, you can go to baptistonline.org slash coronavirus and we have a, a, an 844 number that you can call and we can put you in contact with a, with a physician. Call your physician and they will ask you a series of questions and based on those questions according to the CDC guidelines, they will recommend that you be tested. Your, your, your primary care uh, physician. Most, most commercial labs now that the clinics around the area are using are up and running and they are doing um, COVID-19 testing. So, and and each, each lab has a different process for collecting the specimen and, and, you, and your, your healthcare provider should be able to direct you. So how does that test work? Let's say I need to be tested. What, what is actually done in the office or at the hospital it, it is. It, it's a. It's a nasopharyngeal swab, and, and most people have been swabbed for at some time in your life for the flu, or for strep throat. It's where they, they have a swab, and they and you open your mouth, and or your and they they swab the back of your throat. They take a nas a nasal nasal swab as well. And they, and they basically they have to go a long way in order to they, get what they, they do. Need, right? They do. It's it's important to get a to get a good test. It sure is. Gotcha. It sure is. But since you mentioned flu. I do have a question for you about the flu, actually specifically about the flu vaccine. Will the flu vaccine help offset the coronavirus? Will it lessen the case if the person gets the virus? No. The flu virus, influenza A and B virus, and the coronavirus, novel coronavirus, are two different types of virus. So, so having the flu vaccine is not going to help you with the coronavirus. However, there still is a lot of flu going around. We're still seeing a lot of flu. We still recommend that, that uh, you get, get, get the flu vaccine. 
All right. Yeah. We're going to take another quick break. We will be back with more of our WTVA 9 News Coronavirus Town Hall. Thank you for joining us for our WTVA 9 News Coronavirus Town Hall. I'm Craig Ford, joined by Dr. Mason with Baptist Memorial <laughs> Hospital Union County, here to answer questions that we have, you may have, concerning the coronavirus. How is this virus transmitted? I've heard a lot of different things about that. Primarily, it's, it's transmitted by respiratory droplets. When you cough or sneeze, the virus gets in the, the water particles that you, that you cough out. It's aerosolized, and you breathe it or it gets in contact with your mucous membranes. What about surfaces? Could yes. they be on surfaces? Yes, that, that, that's, that's a good point as well. When you cough or sneeze, some of that, uh, those droplets can get on surfaces. And if you touch those surfaces, you and you touch your your mouth or your eyes or your nose you can get the virus that way that that's why hand hygiene is so important uh, washing your hands properly using a, a hand sanitizer with at least 60 percent alcohol don't rub your your uh, eyes nose or mouth uh, just things things that our, our mothers taught us when we were little uh, so really basic common ba basic, sense basic, hygiene basic common that we've been taught exactly don't don't be around people who have flu like symptoms if you yourself have flu like symptoms don't don't be around people uh, okay any idea why the virus is so contagious you know that that's a, that's a good question uh, now, I, I will admit that I'm not a virologist, so I, I don't know uh, all the behavior of, of viruses, but each virus has what we call an R factor, and that tells how contagious it is. For, for instance, if a, if a virus has an R factor of one, that means for the most part, somebody who has that virus will infect one other person. I think I've seen different, different numbers, but maybe for the, the novel coronavirus, it may be around between two and three. I think flu may be between one and two. I don't know those figures exactly. It's a little bit more than the flu, but, but to give you a little perspective, the measles has an R factor of 15. So the measles is much more highly contagious than uh, coronavirus. I know we, we've heard a lot in recent days about how older folks are more susceptible to being harmed by this virus. It may seem like a no-brainer sure. to you or to a lot of other folks, but why them instead of somebody who's younger or even children? Why them? Well, why they would be more likely to suffer, to either die or to... Really well, well that, you know, it's just like, uh, it's just like with any other uh, viruses like the flu. People who have comorbidities uh, heart disease, lung disease, they are more likely to have serious complications. When it comes to chronic medical conditions, most of those occur in our older populations. So I think, I think that's really the correlation is that most of the older population are the ones that have, have these, these chronic conditions. We have seen across the country, we have seen some younger people with with uh, chronic medical conditions who've gotten seriously ill. And by the way, wh what exactly are people dying from? I think I had heard somebody say it's that virus really gets deep into your lungs, yes. right? It, 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 uh, it, it can attack it, it can attack your lungs, and and if you look at the chest X-ray, it causes something that we call interstitial pneumonia. And uh, if, if people have chest X-rays or CT scans, uh, it, it can show that. But but a lot of times, is what happens is it's the super infection, the super pneumonia that you get. People can get influenza or coronavirus they get the lung issues but they get a superimposed bacterial pneumonia on top of it and that can lead to to respiratory failure it can lead to um, to um, end stage renal you know or end stage organ disease and it can lead to sepsis and, and, and death at, at times I do want to share another viewer question and sure I, I would be shocked if you have not been asked this question one of our viewers wants to know, are others overreacting or are we not reacting enough? I, th I think that's a great question. And, and, and it's a question that we don't, that we don't know, exactly know the answer to. But uh, Dr. Anthony Fauci from the National Inst Institutes of Health, we've seen him on the, um, we've seen him on the TV and, and, and I've, I've grown to, to really enjoy watching him because he, he's what, what I call a straight shooter. Um, 
I heard him say that if you think that you are overreacting, you're probably doing the right thing. At the end of the day, we would much, much rather say that we overreacted rather than saying we didn't react enough. And, and I know we don't have a lot of, um, there's not a lot of hockey around here, but he also said that when we're looking at this, you always want to skate to where the puck is going, not to where the puck has been. So it's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get, get ahead of the curve on this disease. So, you know, if, if, if we're overreacting, so be it, as long as, as, long as we uh, beat this. More of our WTVA 9 News Coronavirus Town Hall right after this. Thanks for joining us for our WTVA 9 News Coronavirus Town Hall. I'm Craig Ford, joined by Baptist Memorial Hospital Union County Dr. H.F. Mason. Quickly, we're going to go through some of these other viewer questions. Okay. Our next one, what are the effects of the coronavirus on pregnant women? Or do we know? At this point, I don't think we know, ex know for sure. Um, as, as to my knowledge, I don't think that there are any harmful effects that we know of. Mm -hmm. I, I'll leave it at that because I'm just not sure. And I think people may not be aware, but because this is so new, Mm -hmm. there's, I mean, there's some research, but really not a lot of research, That's true. is there? That's true. We're, we're, learning, there's, we're learning more and more every day, but there's still a whole lot that we don't know. Another question for you. What do healthcare professionals need to wear to protect themselves from the virus? So, I'll ask you, what if, if, if somebody comes in at Baptist? Well, we, we, we have protocols um, at, our, at our hospital, um, and we've been working on these protocols for a couple of months. If somebody comes in with um, any type of ILI, influenza-like illness, I'm sure you've heard, it, you've yes. heard that, cough, fever, body aches, we are immediately putting a mask on them, and then we're asking them further questions uh, based on the CDC. You know, ha are you having those symptoms? Have you traveled to these areas? Have you been around anybody who has, uh, who has had COVID-19? If that is the case, then we have protocols where we are putting on what we call PPE, personal, uh, personal uh, protective equipment. That would include um, a, a mask, an, an N95 mask, which is a special mask that, that helps prevent the virus particles from entering, uh, uh, in, from penetrating the mask. Eye protection, gowns, and gloves. And then we are immediately taking those patients to to one of our uh, isolation rooms in the in the emergency department. It's a negative pressure room, and, and by negative pressure we mean that it, when you open the door, everything gets sucked into the room, as 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 opposed to positive pressure getting getting blown out. Um, I know there's been a lot of debate about masks. You just mentioned about wearing masks. I'm assuming your position would be like everything else we've heard is it's not really going to help anybody. Yeah. No, no. I, you know, I don't. I don't think wearing a mask out in public is is going to help you. Obviously, if you are around a high risk person, if you're taking care of a high risk person, yes, a, a mask is going to. Uh, I say a high risk person, a person who is infected. Yes, a mask. A mask will help you. All right. Here's 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 one that I got hit with. So. I go to the gas station, I want mm -hmm. to fill up my car, mm -hmm. do I need to wear a glove when I pick up the pump? Do I need to have some sort of covering on my hand when I pick up the pump or should I just grab it, fill it up, clean my hand, what? That, that, that's a good question and, and, and I think that's going to be, that answer is going to be different for every person. Mm -hmm. Some people are going to have much, much more comfort if they're wearing gloves. I, I think that I would personally, once I've, I've, I've filled my car up, I do carry a little hand sanitizer uh, liquid bottle with me. I do clean my hands and get back in my car. And, and that, was, that was what I was going to hit you up with. One of, the, one of the things I definitely wanted to ask you is, when all this is going on, what are you doing, what's your family doing to deal with all this? Well, you know, um, I have two children at home right now who are, who are not at school. I have uh, two children in college 
And, uh, you know, we're just telling them, don't panic, be smart, you know, use just, just like uh, the, the, the CDC guidelines, use proper hand hygiene, don't be around uh, sick people if you're sick yourself, be smart. You know, we're hearing a lot about social distancing now. As you notice, we're six feet apart here, which is, which is good. Uh, but, you know, I think that it's not going to hurt us to not go out and be with our friends. It's not going to hurt us for, for just a short time to, to pay attention and listen to what the experts are telling us. And, and I know it's going to be painful for a while, and, and it's, it's totally disrupting our way of life, but this is something that we have to do. And, and I do think that, that we need to be serious about it. More right after this. We are at the end of our broadcast. It has been a very informative broadcast for me and hopefully for you. I want to thank again Dr. H.F. Mason, the Chief Medical Officer at Baptist Memorial Hospital, Union County. You have really provided some insight for us. We appreciate you taking time out of your day. And thank you for trusting us with our coverage of the coronavirus.